is composed of three hollow sections made of a lightweight hardwood, such as boxwood. Crafting one section at a time, artisans find a portion free of cracks, knots, and other faults. Then cut away the surrounding wood using a bandsaw. They measure the block's diameter to ensure it's large enough. Then they carefully mark and drill through the midpoint in order to mount the block on a lathe. Precision is critical. The block must be perfectly centered as it's rounded into a cylinder. Next, a large drill is used to widen the inside hole, known as the bore. It's enlarged enough to insert a tool called a reamer. Then workers ream the bore to the final diameter, which varies according to the size of the recorder. The bore tapers slightly towards the bottom of the instrument. The cylinder, now a tube, goes back on a lathe. The smooth pencil line shows the bore is straight and the tube is centered. The outside is trimmed to reduce it to the right diameter and the measurements checked with calipers. Then it's back onto the lathe for the final profiling. This is where the maker gets to work their artistry by embellishing the tube with ornamentation typical of the Baroque period. From raw wood to this decorative stage, it takes about an hour and a half to cut and shape the recorder's three sections. The head joint, the middle joint, and the foot joint. Now the surface of each joint is smoothed with fine sandpaper. Locking the middle and foot joints in a vise, the woodworker drills the finger holes. Seven holes down the front and one in the back for the thumb. For the recorder to play in tune, they must follow the precise measurements specified in the technical drawings. In the head joint, they cut a flat canal called the windway. It directs the air that's blown into the instrument. Next, they carve out a rectangular window with a sloped opening called a labium. The labium is what regulates the recorder's tone, the sound quality, so its size and angle are critical. The air the musician blows into the mouthpiece travels down the windway and hits the sharp edge of the labium. This creates a whistle effect, thanks to a block of wood closing off the top of the instrument. Cedar is used because it's rot resistant, despite years of hot air and saliva blowing on it. The head joint is completed by beveling the top. This forms the mouthpiece. Now a thin layer of cork is glued around all the joints. This creates a snug fit when the instruments assemble. After testing the recorder's tone and tuning, making adjustments to the workings if necessary, the wood is stained, then waxed, and buffed to a shine. Recorders have a two octave or 16 note range and come in about 15 different sizes. So whether it's your kid's sister learning her scales or a master creating musical harmony, the recorder has survived, and survived well.